go ahead, pinch yourself. You are alive. You have not died and gone to heaven, even though it sounds like it and feels like it. Shalom, thank you so much. We appreciate you sharing your gift with us. And adding so much to our Christmas celebration. Did I say it yet? Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making this worship service a part of your celebration this year. I was going to say, I'm glad you joined us for our late service, uh, but I'd also say thank you for joining us for our early service this year. This is more like our traditional late service. It's been a different year, hasn't it? It's even been a different 24 hours. Yesterday was 55 degrees. Now we're talking close to zero. So thank you for coming tonight. As I was thinking about our celebration tonight, I was thinking about how sometimes the untimeliness of things is so apparent. Events in our life, the continuum of life, from birth to death, sometimes we speak of the untimeliness of things. And when tragedy happens, or a young person dies, or, or, or we're, uh, we call it an untimely death, don't we? Such was the case this last week when my sister's husband died suddenly with, without warning. It was untimely, but yet Bob is celebrating with Jesus this year. And even in untimeliness, God is present with us in all of those challenges of life. Like I said, we talk about untimeliness of things. Sometimes we talk about becoming pregnant as being untimely. We want all our ducks in a row. We want all the security of things right. We want stable work. We want everything established, don't we? We want things to be in their perfect time. Sometimes when I talk about having kids, I have to remind people, things aren't always going to be perfect. And that was a scenario of Jesus' birth, untimely to our way of thinking. Mary was too young. She was not married. She and Joseph were not settled into their life. They were planning. They were making preparation for that lifetime together, but they weren't there yet. But have you ever noticed how God's sovereign timeliness is not our timeliness in things. God says, at just the right time, such and such. And in the case of the story of, of God's incarnation, what we're celebrating tonight, such was the case. Prophecies fulfilled at just the right time. The sovereign of all creation took on flesh and blood at just the right time. And at just the right time, Jesus gave his life that we, that you and I, might have life. We celebrate that also this evening. That we have the opportunity of being reconciled to God because of God's great love for us. God's timing is perfect. Romans 5, 6 says, You see... At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ came into a sin-sick world to make the way for us, back then and today. And God's love is always at the right time. And so on this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the horribly untimeliness of things, of life, even of 2020 and all that has occurred, I pray that each one of us will know God's timeliness, that the love, the hope, the light of Christ would be upon us, would burn brightly in us. Because 2 Corinthians 6 says, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. May you heed his voice tonight. May you hear his call. May you celebrate the love of God as we together.
praise and worship. Now is just the right time to allow the Lamb of God into your heart. Let's pray together. Awesome and glorious God, the man manifestation of your tremendous love for us was poured out on that first Christmas. Jesus, your willingness to come, to live that life, to be, to be marginalized, to be broken, that we might have life. We praise you tonight, and we thank you. In your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. Good evening. I'd like to say Merry Christmas and may God bless you all. Uh, we're reading from Luke uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Luke 2, 15, 20. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all... All they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Thank you. 
John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, that he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We light the Christ candle, proclaiming the true light that came into the world to overcome the darkness. So come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And indeed, we come worshiping God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and, and He invites us. Now, you might uh, find it interesting that the early church didn't celebrate Christmas, but they certainly celebrated the partaking of the Lord's Supper. And tonight, we get to do both. And so, tonight, we celebrate not only Christ's birth, but we celebrate Christ's sacrifice, His pouring out of His life's blood for us for the redemption of you and I. And so, in a few minutes, you'll be invited to come forward. We have gluten-free bread um, as, as we partake of tonight, and I'll be handing you the bread, and you'll be uh, able to take a cup from the, from the trays. They're spaced apart, so you won't have to touch a cup that anyone else touched. And you're welcome, if you'd like to, to spend a moment or two it. Uh, up in prayer. We don't have our communion rails tonight, but you're welcome to spend a moment in prayer here at the altar. We practice an open communion table in the United Methodist Church. That means that anyone who professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who believes in Him and repents of their sins and believes in Christ for the forgiveness of those sins, is welcome to partake. There are trays to the side to deposit your cups after you've had communion. And then I'd like you to take a candle, and we will make our way around the sanctuary tonight. And if we have, and I'd like to keep us spaced apart, except in your family groups, um, but we will be passing the light of Christ to one another. And if we need to, we'll come down the center aisle just to make sure everyone has space. 
on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he, and he prayed a blessing over it. He prayed something like this. Barakatao Donai Alhenu. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. For you have rescued our ancestors from their bondage in Egypt. You walked with them through the desert and provided daily for their needs. Especially that bread from heaven. God bless this bread from heaven. Amen. And Jesus broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he prayed a, a blessing over that as well. And it went something like this. Barakatao Danai Heloheinu. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. For you have given us your law that we might walk uprightly before you. You have invited us to live in holy covenant with you. You have provided and redeemed us through the blood of the Lamb. Bless now this blood of the covenant. In your name, Jesus. We pray tonight. And thank you, Father. Amen. We will pray now the Lord's Prayer as we prepare ourselves to receive. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come in peace on the Lord's witness.
world. Those who follow him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Merry Christmas, everyone. Go and share the light of Christ wherever you go. Receive the blessing of God. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do it. Go now in that light, that love of Christ, to love God 
and serve his world. Merry Christmas, everyone.